channel so today i'm going to be doing another read with me today i'm going to be reading chapter one from pride and prejudice by jane austen obviously people don't really read this sort of stuff anymore like obviously people don't really read anymore but and i've not actually read this yet like i think i managed to get to page six which isn't good but my defense there are a lot of words on the page like and it's about it's bigger than my head so rose normal books which are about that size pretty much the size of my head but yeah i just thought let's read this and fun fact this book was presented to me by the friends of St George's Academy on the 25th of November 2015 in recognition of her effort and achievement in 2014 to 15. And this I got for the Form Tutors Award, which I have got somewhere in my room. But like I said, lots of words on the page and this chapter is only one and a half pages because they don't have like gaps and usually it has like what a thousand pages but they've managed to come it into 187 but I'm still not gonna get through it <laughs> but ugh, seriously I'm not but without further ado let's just get into this video. Let's get reading. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of good fortune must be in want of a wife. However, little known the feelings or views of such a man may be on his first entering a neighbourhood. This truth is so well fixed in the minds of the surrounding families that he is considered the rightful property of some one or other of their daughters. My dear Mr. Bennet, said his lady to him one day, have you heard that Netherfield Park is let at last? Mr. Bennet replied that he had not. But it is, returned she, for Mrs. Long has just been here, and she told me all about it. Mr. Bennet made no answer. Do you not want to know who has, who has taken it? cried his wife impatiently. You want to tell me and I have no, no objection to hearing it. This is my invitation enough. Why, my dear, you must know. Mrs. Long says that uh, Netherfield is taken by a young man of large fortune from the north of England. That he came down on Monday in a... Chase? I don't know. Chase? Um, for... To see the place. And was so much delighted with it that he agreed with Mr. Norris immediately that he is to take, pos take possession before Michaelmas and some of his servants are to be in the house by the end of the next week. What is his name? Bingley. Is he married or single? Oh, single, my dear, to be sure. A single man of large fortune. Four or five thousand a year. What a fine thing for our girls. How so? How can it affect them? My dear Mr. Bennet, replied his wife, how can you be so tiresome? You must know that I am thinking of his marrying one of them. Is that his design in settling here? Design? Nonsense. How can you talk so? But it is very likely that he may fall in love with one of them. And therefore, you must visit him as soon as he comes. I see no occasion for that. You and the girls may go, or you may send them by themselves, which perhaps will be still better, for as you are uh, as handsome as any of them, Mr. Bingley may like you the best of the party. My dear, you flatter me. I certainly have had my share of beauty, but I do not pretend to be anything extra extraordinary now. When a woman has five grown-up daughters, she ought to give over thinking of her own beauty. In such cases, a woman has not has not often much beauty to think of. 
But my dear, you must indeed go and see Mr. Bingley when he comes into the neighbourhood. It is more than I engage for, I assure you. But consider your daughters. Only think what an establishment it would be for one of them. So William and Lady Lucas are determined to go, merely on that account. For in general, you know, they visit no newcomers. Indeed you must go, for it will be impossible for us to visit him if you do not. You are over-scrupulous, surely. I dare say, Mr. Bingley will be very glad to see you, and I will send a few lines by you to assure him of my hearty consent to his marrying whichever chooses of the girls. Oh, I must throw in a good word for my little Lizzie. I desire you will do no such thing. Lizzie is not a bit better than the others, and I am sure she is not half so handsome as Jane, nor half so good humoured, no half, nor half so good humoured as Lydia. But you are always giving her the preference. They have none of them such much to recommend them," replied he. They are all silly and ignorant like other girls. But Lizzie has something more of quickness than her sisters. Mr. Bennet, how can you abuse your own children in such a way? You take their light in vexing me. You have no compassion for my poor nerves. You mistake me, my dear. I have a high respect for your nerves. They are my old friends. I have heard you mention them with consideration these last twenty years at least. Ah, you do not know what I suffer. But I hope you will get over it and live to see many young men of four thousand a year come into the neighbourhood. It will be no use for us if twenty such should come since you will not visit them. Depend upon it, my dear, that when there are twenty I will visit them all. Mr Bennet was so odd a mixture of quick parts, sarcastic humour, reserve and caprice, that the experience of three and twenty years had been insufficient to make his wife understand his character. Her mind was, a less, was less difficult to develop. She was a woman of mean understanding, little information and uncertain temper. When she was discontented, she fancied herself nervous. The business of, of her life was to get her daughters married. Its solace was visiting and news. And that is the end of chapter one. That was quite hard to read in terms of it started to wake my brain a bit because the writing was a little bit small. I'm not gonna say. Well it wasn't well it was small but I can read that small writing. It's just trying to focus on which lines it is. It seems interesting. I don't know whether I'd read the whole thing because it is obviously very tiring on the brain. But then again, if you're about to go to sleep at night, you're going to want something to read that might it's going to tire you out. And as I said, it tires you out. Because <laughs> I just yawned. But yeah. I do really like that book. Just. I don't know whether I'd read the whole thing. Okay, now that's the end of this video. If, I, if you guys enjoyed, don't forget to smash a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe down below and comment any video ideas because I'm still stuck for November and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!